On to Article 27 of EU Directive 2010-63-EU. And this article is entitled Tasks of the Animal Welfare Body. Uh, I'm just interested in E. You can read the rest of it yourself. It says advice on rehoming schemes, including the appropriate socialisation of the animals to be rehomed. So they have an important um, function, this animal welfare body. Uh, I just have to point out that this animal welfare body is not an external welfare body like Animal Aid or the RSPCA, but it is an internal animal welfare body. So it will just be constructed from people that work in the Animal Experimentation Laboratory. Part 2 of Article 27 reads, Member States should ensure that the records of any advice given by the animal welfare body and decisions taken regarding that advice are kept for at least three years. The records shall be made available to the competent authority upon request. So that would be the Home Office or someone that the Home Office deems competent to make these decisions. Uh, I'll just make the small point here that I don't know whether they were going to be made available to the public or not. It would be nice if they were. You might be able to get it with a Freedom of Information request. Article 31. Information on dogs, cats and non-human primates. 1. Member States shall ensure that all breeders, suppliers and users keep the following information on each dog, cat and non-human primate. A. Identity B. Place and date of birth when available. C whether it is bred for use in procedures, and D, in the case of a non-human primate, whether it is the offspring of non-human primates that have been bred in captivity. Two, and I feel this is a positive part of the directive, reads, each dog, cat and non-human primate shall have an individual history file which follows the animal as long as it is kept for the purposes of this directive. The file shall be established at birth or as soon as possible thereafter and shall cover any relevant reproductive, veterinary and social information on the individual animal and the projects in which it has been used. 3. The information referred to in this article shall be kept for a minimum of three years after the death or rehoming of the animal and shall be made available to the competent authority upon request. On to Article 39 now, Retrospective Assessment, and this is a positive part, I feel, of the directive. One reads, Member States shall ensure that when determined in accordance with Article 38.2.F, the retrospective assessment shall be carried out by the competent authority, which shall, on the basis of the necessary documentation submitted by the user, evaluate the following a. Whether the objectives of the project were achieved b. The harm inflicted on animals, including the numbers and species of animals used and the severity of the procedures and c. Any elements that may contribute to the further implementation of the requirement of replacement, reduction and refinement 2. All projects using non-human primates and projects involving procedures classified as severe, including those referred to in Article 15.2, shall undergo a retrospective assessment. Article 39 ends with Clause 3, which reads, Without prejudice to Paragraph 2 and by way of derogation from Article 38.2.F, Member States may exempt projects involving only procedures classified as mild or non-recovery from the requirement of a retrospective assessment. On to Article 46 now, and this is about avoidance of duplication of procedures. Each Member State shall accept data from other Member States that are generated by procedures recognised by the legislation of the Union, unless further procedures need to be carried out regarding that data for the protection of public health, safety or the environment. So it's good that they're trying to get to grips with this duplication of experiments, because let's face it, if someone has experimented on animals in one part of the Union and someone has just duplicated those experiments in another part, I mean, that's completely unacceptable. 
On to Article 47, Alternative Approaches. It reads, the Commission and the Member States shall contribute to the development and validation of alternative approaches which could provide the same or higher levels of information as those obtained in procedures using animals, but which do not involve the use of animals or use fewer animals, or which entail less painful procedures, and they shall take such other steps as they consider appropriate to encourage research in this field. That sounds really good, but an awful lot of the science using animals is misleading and erroneous when uh, interpreted and applied to human beings, especially in toxicity tests. So... Really, I think history will look back at that and say, especially where it says provide the same or higher levels of information. I mean, they will look back as that as a bit of a joke, I think. Anyway, let's get on to Clause 2 of Article 47 now. OK, this is Clause 2 to 6 of Article 47. It reads, Member States shall assist the Commission in identifying and nominating suitable specialised and qualified laboratories to carry out such validation studies. 3. After consulting the Member States, the Commission shall set the priorities for those validation studies and allocate the tasks between the laboratories for carrying out those studies. 4. Member States shall at national level ensure the promotion of alternative approaches and the dissemination of information thereon. 5. Member States shall nominate a single point of contact to provide advice on the regulatory relevance and suitability of alternative approaches proposed for validation. I think that's a very good idea, point five. Six, the Commission shall take appropriate action with a view to obtaining international acceptance of alternative approaches validated in the Union. That's a very good idea as well. On to Article 48 now, Union Reference Laboratory, which I think is a very good idea. One, the Union Reference Laboratory and its duties and tasks shall be those referred to in Annex 7. And we'll have a look at that in a minute. Two, reads, the Union Reference Laboratory may collect charges for the services it provides that do not directly contribute to the further advancement of replacement, reduction and refinement. Three, detailed rules necessary for the implementation of paragraph 2 of this article and Annex 7 may be adopted in accordance with the regulatory procedure referred to in Article 56.3. Here is Annex 7, Duties and Tasks of the Union Reference Laboratory. 1. The Union Reference Laboratory referred to in Article 48 is the Commission's Joint Research Centre. 2. The Union Reference Laboratory shall be responsible in particular for a. Coordinating and promoting the development and use of alternatives to procedures, including in the areas of basic and applied research and regulatory testing. Uh, it's going to be difficult to find alternatives to basic research. Anyway, B. Coordinating the validation of alternative approaches at union level. C. Acting as a focal point for the exchange of information on the development of alternative approaches. That's a very good idea. D. Setting up, maintaining and managing public databases and information systems on alternative approaches and their state of development. Another good idea. E. Promoting dialogue between legislators, regulators and all relevant stakeholders, in particular industry, biomedical scientists, consumer organisations and animal welfare groups, with a view to the development, validation, regulatory acceptance, international recognition and application of alternative approaches. Another good idea. 3. The Union Reference Laboratory shall participate in the validation of alternative approaches. Article 49, and this article is entitled National Committees for the Protection of Animals Used for Scientific Purposes. It reads, Each member state shall establish a national committee for protection of animals used for scientific purposes. It shall advise the competent authorities and animal welfare bodies on matters dealing with the acquisition, breeding, accommodation, 
care and use of animals in procedures and ensure sharing of best practice. Two, the national committees referred to in paragraph one should exchange information on the operation of animal welfare bodies and project evaluation and share best practice within the union. The animal welfare bodies are internal bodies, they're not external bodies. Article 54, this is entitled Reporting, and I'm just going to read out one and two of this article. It reads, Member States shall by 10th November 2018 and every five years thereafter send the information on the implementation of this directive and, particular, and in particular articles 10.1, 26, 28, 34, 38, 39, 43 and 46 to the Commission. Two, Member States shall collect and make publicly available on an annual basis statistical information on the use of animals in procedures including information on the actual severity of the procedures and on the origin and species of non-human primates used in procedures. Member States shall submit that statistical information to the Commission by 10th of November 2015 and every year thereafter. Article 56 Committee, and I'm just going to read out part one of this. The Commission shall be assisted by a committee. So it'll be interesting to see who's on that committee. OK, let's get on to the next article. This is Article 57, Commission Report. 1. By 10th of November 2019 and every five years thereafter, the Commission shall, based on the information received from Member States under Article 54.1, submit to the European Parliament and the Council a report on the implementation of this directive. 2. By 10th of November 2019, every three years thereafter, the Commission shall, based on the statistical information submitted by Member States under Article 54.2, submit to the European Parliament and the Council a summary report on that information. Article 58, and this is about reviews to the Directive. It reads, the Commission shall review this directive by the 10th of November 2017, taking into account advancements in the development of alternative methods not entailing the use of animals, in particular of non-human primates, and shall propose amendments where appropriate. Second paragraph reads, the Commission shall, where appropriate and in consultation with the Member States and stakeholders, conduct periodic thematic reviews of the replacement reduction and refinement of the use of animals in procedures, paying specific attention to non-human primates, technological developments and new scientific and animal welfare knowledge. Article 59. Competent Authorities each Member State shall designate one or more competent authorities responsible for the implementation of this directive. Member States may designate bodies other than public authorities for the implementation of specific tasks laid down in this directive only if there is proof that the body a. has the expertise and infrastructure required to carry out the tasks and b. is free of any conflict of interest as regards the performance of the tasks. So this is if the Home Office wants to ask a private sector company to act as a competent authority, it's, the directive is just saying here they mustn't have a conflict of interest. OK, let's get on to the next article now. Article 61, Transposition. Member States shall adopt and publish by 10th of November 2012 the laws, regulations and administrative provisions necessary to comply with this directive. They shall forthwith communicate the text of those provisions. They shall apply those provisions from the 1st of January 2013. OK, we're coming to the end of this piece on the EU Directive. Uh, I'm going to miss out the next paragraph, but two, Member States shall communicate to the Commission the text of the main provisions of national law which they adopt in the field covered by this Directive. So here in the UK, our law, our national law, is the Animal Scientific Procedures Act 1986. So this will have to be amended 
this is how the transposition works. So the new directive, everything in the new directive from the EU, will have to be transposed into the Animal Scientific Procedures Act 1986, and the amended version will have to be sent to the Commission, and the Commission will just have to look at it to make sure it complies with the directive. OK, we'll look at the very last slide now. And here it is. It's Article 65, Entry into Force. It reads, This directive shall enter into force on the 20th day following its publication in the official journal of the European Union. Article 66 is entitled Addressees and reads, This directive is addressed to the Member States. Done at Strasbourg, 22nd of September 2010, for the European Parliament and for the Council.